Hi, and welcome back to Small Caps. My name is Jess Holland, and today we are hearing from ASX listed FarmOst, which ticker code is PAA. FarmOst is a clinical stage company developing novel targeted cancer therapeutics for both humans and animals. Here to tell us more is the newly appointed CEO, Mr. Michael Thurn. Hi, Michael. Welcome to the show. Hi, Jess. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Well, firstly, Michael, congratulations um, on your new role. Um, as the newly appointed CEO uh, at Farmost, can you give our small caps audience a bit of background about yourself and your journey um, in the biotechnology industry? Uh, firstly, um, that sort of led you to your current role now at Farmost. My uh, biotech uh, journey started almost 30 years ago uh, with my PhD, which was in license by the second biotech company to list on the Australian Stock Exchange by, by the name of Norvet, which uh, then went on to be uh, known as Kazar Therapeutics. But my PhD was uh, in a veterinary application and it involved isolating the neurotoxins from the Australian paralysis tick, Ixodes holociclus. And and the Australian paralysis tick was uh, responsible for causing paralysis in um, in mainly companion animals. And I can happily report as a result of my PhD, there is now a vaccine uh, that has been successfully produced by researchers at the University of Queensland. And, and since then, uh, I've held leadership positions in a number of private and publicly listed biotech companies, uh, including amongst that... Uh, time at the TGA evaluating drugs and vaccines for registration in Australia. As a result, you know, I basically consider my core skills are in drug development and drug regulation. And, and over the years, I've I've led a wide variety of development programs and, and have close to about a dozen IND filings with the FDA now uh, for a variety of therapeutic indications, including oncology, CNS and, and dermatology. Some of those development programs have been very successful. I was part of a team that secured Cytopia's $200 million, uh, $290 million Jack Kynase co-development deal with Novartis. And I was founding managing director of a company called Spinifex Pharmaceuticals that was spun out of the University of Queensland that was uh, acquired by Novartis in a deal that was worth over $700 million US. Uh, over the last 15 years, though, I've spent most of my time in the dermatology industry as CEO of a privately backed uh, company called Mimetica and as COO and executive director of an ASX listed company by the name of Botanics Pharmaceuticals. And in both those companies, I led their uh, lead products uh, into phase two clinical development. Amazing, Michael. So you actually sort of answered um, a lot of my second question, which was, you know, you've held a lot of roles in the public and private space. Um, but just, you know, adding on to that, what sort of unique perspectives do you think, um, having held those roles, uh, that you bring now specifically to Farmost? Yeah, being in, involved in a number of private companies has, has really given me an appreciation and for developing and executing cost-effective drug development programs. And that's primarily through building virtual teams, but, but cost-effectively using, using consultants where you can um, turn them on and off as, uh, as, as needed because of the finite amount of funds that's generally involved in, in private companies. At Farmos, though, you know, we're not about developing an empire. We're about using shareholders' funds as cost-effectively as, as possible and, and uh, building value. On the public side, I, I would have to say it's the communication of results and progress to the market and, and you know, putting together a regulatory package for, for the FDA or, or a human research ethics uh, committee submission is, is somewhat relatively easy uh, process compared to sometimes communicating complicated science to shareholders. So, to be think to be fair, I, I think um, this is a priority area for Farmos, uh, creating awareness about the company, the science behind uh, its lead drug, monopentanol, 
our drug development programs in veterinary oncology and also in human health for motor neurone disease and oncology are, are major goals of mine. That's so interesting, Michael. It's so interesting that you 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 speak about the um, you know, the regulate the regulatory side of things being easier than the communicating the the science side of biotech. I've never really heard that side of it before because usually it's it can be you know quite a process and and, and a lengthy one at times. Um, but could you share some? sort of insights with our audience about the work that you've done specifically with uh, phase one and phase two clinical trials uh, that might be relevant to your role now at uh, Farmost. I've been involved in a, a number of phase one and phase two clinical studies uh, over the years. And probably, you know, the most important aspect of those clinical studies is the quality of the investigators and the sites that were involved in the clinical studies. So running studies here in Australia and in the US, it's always a common denominator. And Pharmos is incredibly fortunate to have the calibre of Professor Susan Mathers at uh, Calgary Hospital in Melbourne and Professor Dominic Rowe at the Motor Neurone Disease Research Centre located in Macquarie University in Sydney. And, and both Professor Mathers and Professor Rowe are, are highly regarded in the uh, motor neurone disease space. Uh, they're uh, excellent clinical researchers and they're responsible for seeing between 15 and 20% of all patients suffering from MND, motor neurone disease, Australia-wide. So we really look forward to continuing our strong relationship with Professor Mathers and uh, Professor Rowe as we move forward um, monopentanol into phase two clinical studies. That's so interesting, Michael. It sounds like you're working with some, you know, some really experienced professionals. Um, and, and speaking of experience, um, you mentioned um, briefly your experience in both the FDA and TGA side of things. Um, how do you see the regulatory landscape, um, you know, influencing drug development? Without a doubt, it would be uh, the changing regulatory landscape for rare diseases through the Orphan Drug Act in the US. Uh, I mean, Pharmos is very US ex eccentric, uh, given that 65% of the market uh, for any drug really is in the US. So rare diseases is, is uh, you know, some of the stats around rare diseases in the uh, last five years are quite incredible. Uh, in fact, you know, 50% of drugs that have been approved by the FDA have been uh, in rare diseases. So there's a really a cause and effect relationship that's that's playing out between you know the generous set of regulatory incentives like seven years market exclusivity, orphan drug designation, and and potentially accelerated approval under that orphan drug act that has seen pharmaceutical companies really migrate uh, in waves uh, into the rare disease space and. And this is supported by the large acquisition deals that have been occurring uh, lately in the rare disease area. So Chinook Therapeutics, it had two late stage clinical programs for rare kidney disorder. Uh, mm -hmm. That company was purchased by Novartis in June last year for $3.2 billion. And then uh, if you look at the largest biopharma deal that was done in 2022, Amgen uh, acquired Horizon Therapeutics. Again, they had a rare disease pipeline for $27.8 billion. So uh, seeking an orphan drug designation for Pharmos rare disease program in, in MND is, is one of the near-term milestones for Pharmos. So now, Michael, you're the newly appointed CEO. What attracted you uh, to work with Pharmos, firstly, and what is the current status of the development programs at the company that you're most excited about working on? Yeah, I've been following Pharmos for some time now, and, and it's truly unique, uh, the offerings that Pharmos has in both animal health veterinary space, but, but also in the human health space. And it all relies on repurposing a well-studied and previously approved veterinary drug for intestinal worms in sheep uh, by the name of monopentanol or, or MPL, as we abbreviate it too. And research conducted um, 
by Pharmos and also sponsored by Pharmos has shown that MPL is a potent mTOR inhibitor. And mTOR is a, is a protein kinase that's inside our cells that's responsible for regulating cell growth. Mm-hmm. It has application in cancer, but also in neurogenitive diseases like motor neuron disease or um, AS, ALS, as it's commonly known. In cancer, monopentanol or MPL slows and inhibits cancer growth, whereas what we're finding in motor neuron disease or ALS, it promotes the removal of the toxic buildup of proteins and MRA, the metabolic waste that's inside the neurons that eventually leads to neuronal death if uh, kept unchecked. Our veterinary program which is in oncology, is humming along, and the results have been released to the market that show the treatment of of, uh, B-cell lymphoma in dogs, which is the largest market segment for canine oncology products. MPL uh, increases the medium survival time for these animals over historical comparisons to other currently marketed canine oncology products. But it gets better. Unlike standard therapies, uh, that are used for, for oncology. The animals didn't suffer from any of the usual side effects um, that you see with, with chemotherapy, like uh, in animals, they call it CHOP, uh, which is a, a common type of chemotherapy used in dogs. Uh, treatment with MPL led to a much better quality of life for those animals and had very little impact on the animal's normal daily routine. So Pharmos is currently talking to a number of interested partners in the veterinary oncology space, and we look to updating the market uh, as we close out the current study uh, with monopentanol in in dogs uh, in the the very near future. And then there's what I probably refer to as as, um, our flagship process program for motor neurone disease and and motor neurone disease is a devastating rare disease that affects the motor neurons in the brain and spinal cord and it invariably is fatal within two to five years uh, from diagnosis and and patients suffering with MND progressively lose function of their muscles and eventually succumb to respiratory distress paralysis leading to their death there's currently three treatments that have been approved for motor neurone disease. Uh, the last one being Relivrio, it gained accelerated approval late last year. And, and Relivrio extends the median survival time uh, for an MND patient by about 10 months. So not, so not great, but it's an improvement over the other two approved products, Adaverone and Relizol. Uh, um, median survival times for up to six months. Over the last year, Pharmos has embarked on a phase one study in MPL in, in motor neurone disease and ALS that has received funding, quite significant amount of funding from Fight MND. And, and that study, the MEN study, as we call it, involves a study of design in which 12 patients progressively receive higher doses of MPL under the watchful eye of a safety monitoring committee. And and the final dose level is currently underway at a dose of 10 megs per keg uh, per day over a period of 28 days. So that study is is close to wrapping up. It's worth pointing out that unlike most phase one studies uh, where each progressive increase in dose level is, is usually associated with uh, a new group of participants that are naive to the study drug. MND patients in the men's study continuously take uh, monopentanol, resulting in most patients being on the drug for up to a, a year now. So this study designs offers an enormous advantage over the more traditional study do- design uh, in that patients essentially act as their own control, allowing for changes in safety and preliminary efficacy, given that it's a phase one study to be accessed longitudinally or over an extended period of time. And and in Pharmos's case, uh, for over a year now, uh, patients have been taking monopentanol. And during the year, the market has been kept up to date on our progress and various interim results uh, have been released. And and these interim results have been very encouraging. Uh, It certainly points that uh, MPL 
is a very safe drug for this patient population as there's been no serious adverse events or even deaths reported to date. And, and just that in itself is significant for this vulnerable, vulnerable patient population. As for the preliminary measures of efficacies that, that have been released, we're confident from the pharmacodynamic results that patients are receiving doses capable of inhibiting the mTOR pathway. We're also encouraged to see that the surrogate endpoints for neuronal degeneration, plasma uh, NFL, and also urinary P75 ECD levels equate to stabilization or lack of disease progression in this patient population. So really these results all point to moving forward with a, a phase two study in MND. My aim is really to, to follow um, the complete uh, MND study, make sure that that study is uh, completed successfully and rapidly move forward with a orphan drug designation application with the FDA. And that will start the conversation with the FDA. We will then look to file a pre-IND meeting uh, to open our phase two study in the US as well as here in Australia. And that could ultimately lead to an accelerated approval of MPL uh, for, modern, for motor neurone disease. Amazing, Michael. Now, you know, with all of these sort of encouraging results from your interim clinical studies uh, for MPL, can you tell us a little bit about how um, the company's planning to fund those next phases of um, MPL's clinical development? And also, you know, what can we expect next from the company? You briefly touched on it at the end, but I'd just really like you to emphasize that for our audience. Yeah, so Pharmos is, is continuing to assess its options for funding for that next stage of clinical development, particularly the phase two study uh, for MND. And that uh, includes uh, looking at non-dilutive funding through Fight MND, uh, the uh, the funder, the current funder of the the men's study here here in Australia, but also you know from the results of, of the men's study, uh, we're building a compelling case for funding through the FDA Orphan Products Clinical Trials Grant Program. So we'll look to uh, assess our options around funding and um, you know engage via M MND, but but more importantly look to uh, seek funding from the FDA. And as we, we move forward and the final top line results are, are announced for the MEN's study, this could also attract attentions from a commercial partner, uh, particularly if we're in the position to potentially receive an accelerated approval from the FDA after phase two. Over the next six to eight months, uh, there's obviously going to be a number of near-term catalysts across both programs, the veterinary program and the uh, human health MND program. And it's for these reasons why I believe Pharmos represents a, a significant investment opportunity. Amazing, Michael. Um, thank you so much for your time today. Again, congratulations on your new role. Um, two weeks on the job so far, so good. Um, <laughs> yeah. And judging by the fact that you could pronounce all of those highly technical well, drugs. I struggled on one. Yeah, <laughs> I, I struggled on one. Really good. I noticed so, that only because you stumbled on one out of many <laughs> that you reeled off. So well done. Um, yeah, a, we're looking forward no to watching the company's developments and, uh, you know, looking forward to having you back on the show to, to, to hear more about how you guys are going. Yeah, that sounds great, Jess.